Beer Seekers, I'm Nick. Sometimes manufacturers have some really crazy ideas, most of which are proof of concept designs and stuff that we'll never get to see, let alone even buy for ourselves. Gigabyte decided that instead of doing that, they would make just about the craziest desktop motherboard you've ever seen. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure that you're subscribed. In this video, which is the first Motherboard Mondays for 2019, we decided that instead of doing more of the same, we would show you guys just about the most insane motherboard money can buy. And yeah, we're, we're checking out <laughs> the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force that features a giant water block that covers basically every single thing on the motherboard that gets hot. And then you can water cool it. How exciting. Let's check it out. Alrighty, I'm gonna do Motherboard Monday slightly different to the usual format where I'll do all of the unboxing and talk about everything with a voiceover. I'm just gonna do it live because I haven't actually looked at this at all yet. And to be honest with you, <laughs> I'm pretty freaking excited to get this out of the box. So let's do it together for the first time. Like literally, I haven't opened this yet. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's take a look. <laughs> it's huge. Okay, I'm guessing that's the board because um, Gigabyte actually told me that when they ship these boards out, they uh, ship the water blocks separately. So let's just see what we got here first of all. Let's take a look. Aorus all-in-one mono block. That looks pretty pretty exciting. Let's let's take a look. I was right. I was right with my choice of which box would be what. Whoa. Okay. Uh, this is crazy. I mean, I can see it, but you guys can't see this yet. I'm going to pick this up. Wow. That explains why this is incredibly heavy. Guys, check this out. This is the monoblock. It covers the PCH, the VRMs, the CPU, and the M.2 slots. This thing is bonkers and it is properly heavy. Um, I don't even, I don't know how many kilos it is, but it's a lot of kilos. Everything ready to go, including thermal paste for your CPU. This is very, very crazy stuff. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of computer stuff and this is very, very crazy. Let's, let's put that back. Let's see what else we get. Oh my goodness. That, that actually explains everything to do with why that's so heavy. We'll take a closer look at that with some B-roll as well. What else we got here? We've got some screws and washers for mounting all of the things. Um, some M.2 screws for mounting all the M.2 stuff. Uh, we've got the back plate for the back of the motherboard, I'm guessing. I'm guessing, I don't know. Well, it, it, see, it appears to be that way. We've got some additional pads or well, spare pads in case we go through a set of pads, which we, we actually will be going through a set of pads because we are going to be building with this guy. So you should get very excited. I think that's going to be coming probably in about a week. We've got to get a few more bits for that build to happen. Well, that's, that's just a whole massive box with a water block alone. Okay, time to open up the board. Gigabyte actually told me that this is quite similar to the Z390 Aorus Extreme board, except it's got water blocks instead of regular heat sinks. So we'll get the board out. We'll get it out of the way, actually. Let's see if we can just 
lift the board away and then we'll come back to it. We'll have a look at all the little bitties that actually come with this. All right. First off the bat is a bunch of stickers for all of you sticker fiends out there. <laughs> all right, what else have we got in here, mate? It is Motherboard Mondays after all. Okay, let's, uh, let's, the Aorus RGB Fan Commander. I guess we're gonna have to take a look and see what this is. Come on, open up. Oh, okay. There you go, there's an Aorus RGB controller. I didn't know that they made RGB controllers, uh, probably because, uh, to be honest, I don't really pay attention that much to RGB products, but wow, this is actually very, very well constructed. It has, from the looks of it, eight addressable RGB headers. I'm guessing what it is. It's got a motherboard sync header, USB input, SATA power on the controller as well, some temperature probe connectors, and USB out, which I'm guessing it does USB pass through as well. That's really nice. That looks really cool. Let's see what else we get in the box with it. That's a lot of cables. Okay, first off the bat, we have Velcro straps for strapping down your Velcro. <laughs> I mean, your cables are being stupid. Um, a stack of RGB connectors. I think they've got their own, like, pro let's call it proprietary because sometimes the comment section gets uh, a little bit annoyed when I call things proprietary even though um, the connector exists but the company will use it in a certain way which makes it proprietary okay we won't go into that um, a stack of RGB cables basically to RGB up your entire system I don't want to open this yet because I'm going to do that when I actually build the system but by the looks of it there is eight of them in here which is very nice what else have we got we have a temperature probe, another temperature probe, we have some, we have, I'm guessing this is the USB connection for the controller to the motherboard and some, uh, one addressable cable, one analog RGB cable, so one's a 5 volt, one's a 12 volt and some PWM looking stuff. What else have we got in here? SATA power uh, extension cable. That's kind of nice actually. And a USB, these are USB header, um, what's it called? Like for the pass through for the USB headers on the controller itself. Actually, that's quite cool. Hmm. Alrighty, let's check out the last box that we have. That isn't the motherboard. We have a multilingual installation guide. It's in all of the language. Let me guess, it's one of those big, yep, it's one of those big fold out ones. I'm not folding that out, let's be honest. We have the user manual that basically tells you how to live your life. I think that's pretty much what I say in all of these, but it's true, it does tell you how to live your life. Make sure you read this when you're using your motherboard for the first time too. You get a lot of questions in Discord about um, certain things, but all you need to do is just look up the information in the manual because they're usually pretty good. Uh, we've got two more temperature probes. I'm guessing they connect directly into the motherboard for other things. Whoa, there is like way more stuff here. Okay, what do we got here? We have a, a Wi-Fi antenna for your Wi-Fi because the motherboard must have Wi-Fi built in. I haven't even looked at the board yet, so we're gonna take a look at that together as well. I'm guessing these are like lighting cables for the water block. That's very cool. Um, another Wi-Fi antenna. Really? That's interesting, okay. We'll see what that's all about shortly. Uh, we have an SLI, we have an SLI bridge for old school SLI, non-RTX SLI. We have, what is this thing? Oh, what? This is like a quick and easy overclocking looking board with fan headers and like a clear battery, clear CMOS, reset, power switch, everything externally. So if you're doing stuff on the bench, you don't have to, you know, have it plugged into your case. And then it connects with this rear connector on the back. That's really cool. It's kind of like a breakout board for your motherboard. Got a mountain of standoffs and stuff for your M.2 drives. There's heaps of them here. Um, more standoffs, more RGB cables, 
More RGB cables. Comes with a USB stick. Hey, that's really cool. I don't know how much this board is. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm guessing you're paying quite a bit because it is very feature packed. This is one of the most intensely feature packed motherboards I've ever seen. You get an Aura sticker, more RGB cables, and you get, wow, you get, oh, you get a, oh, you get the G connector, which is very nice. This is very handy when you're building and you wanna build real fast. And you get this guy. Well, three of the, well, six of these guys by the looks of it. Sleeved black SATA cables. Very, very nice, very, very premium looking. All right, that's all the uh, little accessory bits that come with it. Let's get to the motherboard. We've got the front panel audio connector. We have an addressable RGB header. That's a five volt one, as well as a 12 volt addressable RGB header and some switches to change BIOSes. We've got the breakout board header, two USB 2.0 headers for things like the lighting controller. We've also got a diagnostic LED screen. That will basically tell you if anything's wrong. Three PWM fan headers and the front panel connector for all your things like switches and lights and all of that jazz. There's additional power for the PCIe slots. This is very handy with this type of motherboard and also six SATA connectors for your hard drives. There's a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header, a PWM fan header, a USB 3.0 header, which is right angled, which is very, very nice. And the 24 pin power connector, which is also on a right angle. I think more motherboards need to actually do this. There's another PWM fan connector, and there's also a button to switch the CMOS settings and to clear the BIOS, and also a power and overclocking button. There's an additional 12 volt analog RGB header, another addressable RGB header, two more PWM fan connectors for CPU fans, and also the connector to light up the monoblock. There's two times eight pin CPU power connectors. This is very good since this motherboard is designed for the 9900K and for overclocking, it can pull a lot of power as well as another PWM fan connector. Like I just mentioned, this motherboard supports the i9-9900K as well as eighth gen and all other ninth gen CPUs on the 1151-2 socket or generation two or whatever they're calling it these days. Unlike other motherboards, you'll notice that the chipset is fully exposed. That's because the monoblock covers the chipset once it's installed to cool it. Not that chipsets actually need that much cooling, but it is cool to have it cool. There's four DDR4 RAM slots that support memory speeds from 2133 all the way up to 4400 megahertz. There's three full-size PCIe slots. The top one is a times 16 slot. The middle one is a times eight slot and the bottom one is a times four slot. And also you notice there's also two times one slots. There's three NVMe M.2 slots. However, one slot can only be used for the Intel CNVI wireless modules. On the back side of the board, you'll notice there is basically armor plating. And I think this is to reinforce the board since the water block is very, very heavy, and I think that if it didn't have it, you'd probably snap your motherboard in half. Now, this is something I want to see more of this year. I want to see more permanently attached IO shields. This is brilliant. I love that I don't have to put this in the case, and it's always there. You've got the antenna connectors for the integrated Intel CNVI wireless module. You've got one gigabit ethernet, USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt. Next up is the 10 gigabit ethernet as well as another USB 3.1 port and another Thunderbolt connector. Two USB 3.0 ports and an HDMI connector. We've got two type A USB 3.0 ports and 3.1 ports. And lastly, we've got that awesome audio interface with the optical output. Very, very nice stuff.
As far as E390 boards go, this is just about as expensive as they get. I'm pretty sure this is easily the most expensive desktop class motherboard on the market right now at a mind numbing, wait for it, 900 US dollars or around about 1,250 Australian dollars. That's bonkers. To be fair though, you're getting a board with 16 phase digital VRMs, 10 gigabit ethernet, Thunderbolt 3, and a giant monoblock water block to cool everything on your motherboard that generates any heat whatsoever. Now we do have a full build with this coming in the next week or so with the Intel i9-9900K, and yeah, that's gonna be on like a whole nother level of awesome. I'm so excited for that build. It's gonna be crazy. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And what an absolutely crazy bonkers motherboard. This is the kind of board that you would seriously see someone sketching up on a piece of paper and being like, that, that's a really cool idea. Well, Gigabyte just went and got that sketch and, and made a board. That's crazy.